Jatkosota kesti kaikkiaan kolme vuotta ja kolme kuukautta. Taistelimme jatkosodassa koko ajan Saksan rinnalla asevelinä, mutta ei liittolaisina. Meidän sotamme oli täydellisesti erilais, eri luontoiset. Saksalaisten sota oli valloitussotaa, kun taas suomalaisten sota oli oman maan puolustamista, oman itsenäisyyden puolustamista. Ankarimmat taistelut sitten käytiin Karjalan kannaksella 44 kesällä, jolloin vihollinen pani kaikki voimansa liikkeelle ja siellä oli todella hirmuiset taistelut, mutta niistäkin selvittiin. Talvisodan ihme tapahtui uusintana. Suomalainen armeija saavutti toisen kerran ja torjunta voitu. Germany attacked the Soviet Union on the 22nd of June 1944. Subsequently, the Soviet Union bombed Finland on the 22nd and on the 25th of June. On the evening of the 25th, Prime Minister Ragnell announced that Finland was in a state of war against the Soviet Union. And on the following day, President Rutte spoke on the radio. When the continuation war began, the Finnish armed forces comprised 475,000 troops. Finnish and Soviet troops were now roughly equal in strength. The German troops in Finland launched their attack in the end of June on the Northern Front, and the Finnish troops joined the attack on the Eastern Front in the beginning of July. The last attack began on the western flank of the Karelian Isthmus in August. Vipuri was retaken on the 29th of August, and the river at the old border was crossed in the beginning of September. The troops rapidly pushed beyond the old border, deep into eastern Karelia. The advance was halted in the beginning of December 1941. This is when the Soviet troops also vacated their base in Hanko. The phase of static warfare had begun. This period of static warfare lasted no less than two and a half years. During that time, the front lines were more or less stationary. Soldiers performed sentinel duties, built up their fortifications, improved roads and carried out logistic transports. The actual fighting on both sides of the front was mainly limited to patrolling, reconnaissance, surprise attacks, prisoner abductions and the odd artillery salvo. There was plenty of free time. Physical fitness was maintained by organizing a wide variety of sports activities. The troops' morale was upheld by entertainment tours, frontline radio broadcasts and newspapers, as well as low-key celebrations of traditional festive events such as Christmas. The military mail kept the troops in touch with the home front. Time was also spent in studying, and maybe even too much, in handicraft and card playing. Nevertheless, one had to be always prepared to thwart an enemy attack. In view of what was about to happen, the time could have perhaps been better spent in improving fortifications. The roughly 80,000 civilians who remained in the occupied area were under the military administration of Eastern Karelia. Schools, stores and healthcare centers were established for the Finno-Ugric peoples, comprising approximately one half of the civilians. The Russian population, on the other hand, ended up in internment camps. During this period of static warfare, the Second World War progressed, resulting in Germany's territorial gains peaking in July of 1942. In the end of 1942, however, the fortunes of war turned for Germany. They were defeated in North Africa and besieged in Stalingrad, where they eventually surrendered on the 2nd of February, 1943. This was the seminal event of the war. 
After this, Finland's political and military leadership decided to break away from the war. However, at this time, Germany's military might and the presence of its troops in Finland did not allow for this. In the summer of 1943, the Allies invaded Sicily and Italy surrendered. At the turn of November-December 1943, the three great powers held a summit in Tehran, where they agreed upon an invasion in northern France. Stalin promised to support the invasion by launching an attack on the Eastern Front. The moment of truth was approaching. The Allies started the culmination of the Second World War by landing in Normandy on the 6th of June, 1944. Three days later, the Soviet Union launched a massive attack on the Karelian Isthmus with overwhelming force and troop concentrations. Finnish intelligence got word of the preparations as early as May. However, headquarters underestimated this information and therefore, at least partially, the attack came as a surprise. Colossal artillery barrages and aerial bombings, as well as a huge mechanized infantry attack, forced the Finns to retreat, to some extent in total disarray. Vipuri was lost on the 20th of June. Finland's independence was hanging by a thread. In the end of June and the beginning of July, brutal, although victorious, battles were fought along the Bay of Vipuri, Tali, Ihantala, Vuosalmi, Aurepää, Vuoksi front line. These were crucial times for Finland's independence. Meidän vaunuja oli ilmeisesti kolme. Minä olin siellä vaunussa numero viisi silloin ampujana. Ajoimme Viipurin kaupungin läpi. Se oli keskiyön jälkeen noin kahden aikaan. Kaupunki oli ihan hiljainen. Tehtävä oli tukea näiden jääkärien vetäytymistä, mutta jääkäreitä siellä ei paljon näkynyt. Pieni joukko sieltä tuli. Ne olivat ilmeisesti jo vetäytyneet kaikki pois. The Finnish reinforcements arriving from Syvari ja Maaselka the significant increase in anti-tank crews and artillery firepower, as well as the arrival of the German flight detachment Kulme, were all crucial to the troops' morale and to the fact that they prevailed. President Rutti made a pledge to Hitler on the 26th of June. He promised that Finland would continue fighting alongside Germany, which was critical for improving the situation in Finland. This guaranteed continuing deliveries of weapons and other military supplies from Germany. Infantry Regiment 200, consisting entirely of Estonian volunteers, fought side by side with Finns in the defensive battles on the Karelian Isthmus. They were an important element in creating the so-called miracle of summer 1944. The motto of the 3,355 Finland boys was for the freedom of Finland and the honor of Estonia. In the middle of July, the Soviet leadership realized how difficult it was going to be to advance any further and therefore began to transfer their troops to the battlefields of Central Europe. The final unsuccessful Soviet attack took place at Ilomantsi at the turn of July-August. After that, the Soviet Union was ready to seek peace. At the same juncture, President Rutti resigned and was replaced by Marshal of Finland Mannerheim. Soon after, he informed Germany that President Rutti's personal pledge to continue fighting with Germany did not bind him. The truce entered into force on the 4th of September at 0700 hours. Minä toimin syksyllä 44 pioneeripataljona 25 toisen komppanian joukkueen johtajana. 
Ja nyt sattui sillä tavalla, että meidän komppanian päällikkö joutui sairaalaan ja minä hänen viransijaisekseen. Ja minä nukuin sitten komppanian päällikön sängyssä, kun yöllä puhelin soi. Ja minä sain ottaa vastaan tällaisen käskyn välirauhan solvimisesta. Ja tässä käskyssä lukee näin. Divisionan käsky numero 1882 kautta 4944. Välirauha solmittu venäläisten kanssa. Vihollisuudet on lopetettava tänään. 4.9. kello 7. Taisteluvalmius on säilytettävä, kello tarkistettava, etulinja ei saa paljastaa, kaikkinainen kanssakäyminen vihollisen kanssa kielletään, mielenosoitukset ynnä muut ilmaisut ilman lupaa kielletty, tiedotettava joukoille heti. Ja kun minä unenpöppörössä ensimmäisen paperin löysin, niin minä lyhykynnällä sitten tämän tähän kirjoitin. Tämä tapa tuli noin 3.30 tienoissa aamuyöllä 4.9. In spite of this, the Soviet troops still continued firing for another day. The Moscow armistice was signed on the 19th of September 1944. Finally, peace. In the continuation war, Finland's casualties totaled 65,000 dead and 142,100 wounded. In turn, the Soviet Union's estimated casualties were 305,000 dead and 600,000 wounded.